This video is about the Bond 30 Joule VCA module from Behringer, which is part of the System 100 series. Like the VCO and the VCF, this module is part of the direct audio path and it is equally important to construct a classic subtractive synth voice. VCAs are part of every classic synthesizer and shouldn't be missing in any modular setup. To put it simple, the main task of an amplifier is to make your sound louder or quieter. A bit more specifically, the amplifier should attenuate or boost a signal without changing its character. Unlike a filter, an amplifier should not alter the frequency content of its input signal. So if we plot a curve that uh, shows the amount of attenuation over the frequency range, this will look like this for a perfect VCA, so it's perfectly horizontal and attenuates all frequencies by the same amount. And this horizontal line can then be shifted up and down to adjust the amount of attenuation, which is also called the gain of the amplifier. And when this gain is voltage controllable, we have a voltage controllable amplifier or VCA. I have set up a simple test sound with a very wide range of harmonics using this ancient computer and we'll see what happens if we feed this sound through the VCA. So in the scope we can see that all these frequency peaks are attenuated by the same amount as expected. In contrast we can use a low pass filter and we see that this attenuates the higher frequencies much more than the lower ones. If we overload a VCA it starts to saturate and even adds frequencies and harmonics to the input sound. but it generally does not remove any of them. There are linear and exponential VCAs and the exponential ones are typically used for audio signals as the exponential response corresponds more naturally to the way we interpret loudness. The amount of attenuation over the VCA gain control then looks like this, so it becomes steeper with higher gain settings. And we can hear a quite aggressive response of the loudness of this sound as uh, we change this gain. The linear response curve on the other hand looks like this, so it's perfectly linear and we can also hear that the response for this linear VCA is now less aggressive as I turn this initial gain control. If a VCA should process control signals it has to be a DC coupled one, since AC coupled VCAs cannot handle constant CV signals because they will pull their output slowly back to zero. This doesn't damage the VCA, but it is usually not what you want if you use your VCA to process CV signals. AC coupled VCAs have an internal passive high pass filter, which is just a capacitor and this blocks DC offsets in the output signal. This is beneficial if the input has unwanted DC offsets, as they disappear over time in the VCA output. 
And we can see this behavior here in the scope. The upper signal is the original one, so this is also the input to the VCA, and the lower signal passed through the VCA first, and um, the VCA that I use here is AC coupled. Actually, it's the 130 module. And when I now uh, apply some DC offset to the input signal, so it will shift upwards, and we see that the VCA pulls it back to zero offset in its output. What seems to be a cool feature is not so good for processing control signals, like we see here for a slow square wave LFO. And this doesn't really look like a square wave anymore in the output of the VCA, since it starts to pull this constant uh, square wave voltage back to zero. Okay, let's now switch to the 130 module. These two VCAs are completely identical and independent, so we can just focus on the left one. Here we have three audio inputs, all with attenuator, like we had with the 121 VCF module. So this is actually an audio mixer built into this VCA, which is a very cool feature. Then we have a green and a red LED, indicating if an audio signal is present and if the VCA is overloaded respectively. Here we have the two VCA outputs, the upper one labeled high is the normal output and the lower one labeled low is about 20 decibel quieter than the normal output. Here we have the initial gain control, which is nothing else than the manual adjustment of this VCA gain. It spans from 0 up to 1 in the fully clockwise position, which means that the VCA then outputs the same signal that we feed into its input at least if we do not overload the inputs. On top of this manual setting come three CV inputs, all with their own attenuator, so this is actually a CV mixer here like we had in the filter module. And with these CV inputs on top of the maximal initial gain, we can achieve a gain of about 1.5, which is the maximal gain for this VCA. Here we can select between linear and exponential response and we already heard the results of these settings earlier. The normal operation of this VCA is quite straightforward. We mix our audio signals together, take care of the overload LED not to come up and then we attenuate our sound manually or CV controlled. If we want to overload the VCA, we can do this by cranking its gain to the max and in the scope we now see the original signal in red and um, it gets slightly distorted by the VCA, which uh, we see in green here. We hear the original signal on the right and the signal that passed through the VCA on the left, however there is not much difference right now. With even more gain we see that this triangle flattens at its peaks because the VCA now saturates and cannot output any higher values, so it just cuts away this peak of the triangle wave. We can also overload the audio mixer here if we feed three signals into it, right now they are all the same, and when we turn these attenuators to 11 then this mixer starts to saturate. Interestingly now we can lower the gain of the VCA and the green LED tells us everything is fine, however the output doesn't look like the input at all. This is because this audio mixer now saturates, but this is not covered by the indicator LEDs, which seems to be like with the original module, at least from what I can tell from the original circuit diagrams. The build quality of this module is good and all knobs feel very heavy and sturdy and the layout follows the original and as I already mentioned in my previous filter video, this layout is great and the audio and CV mixers uh, save you a lot of patching and give you all controls where you need them. So let's listen to a few quick patches with this VCA and I tried to use 
as much VCA as possible here and limited the amount of other modules. So brace for some stranger sounds in the next few minutes.
Thanks for watching and stay tuned.